The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Welcome back. Welcome, folks. Uh, Larry can't make it today, and we are going to be growling and prowling. Dow Industrials right now are trading down 180. You got the Nasdaq up uh, 17. S&Ps are down uh, three and a half. We have the gold contract up $16. Gold is this is whole thing is uh, pretty wild, man. You get a lot of divergences out here, folks. Uh, notes and bonds. The ten-year note. Uh, bottom line, we're moving topside, meaning. Higher price, lower yield. You got the 10 year right now uh, trading up 25 ticks at 118.19. We have the 30 year up, up uh, a one point plus 24 ticks at 140.08. And King Dollar. It's all about King Dollar, man, in a monster way, too. Uh, King Dollar right now is uh, down at 258, 106,832. The Euro is at 101. The yen is trading out here at uh, the 137.6 mark, and the British pound is at 119 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Bottom line, let's go take a look at this S&P. So first, let's go take a look at the futures, because what you have here, I don't, I, we're getting very close to, uh, I think, the, the end of this bounce here. So it's going to get really intriguing. So what you have here is this. You can see you're down four bucks right now, but in the future market, folks, okay, the bottom line, the spike that was down there this morning, that is a high volume spike. So that tells me we're going to be back to that level, which is the 39.30. And right now you're 28 bucks ahead of that. You know, you can see that it's an explosive move down there, man. You got 84,000 contracts. And the last 10 minute bar, we just did 37,000. And right now, we're eight minutes into this bar, and you get about 40,000. Yeah, we're 40,000. 40, but bottom line is that, you know, you need, yeah, it, that's, that's how this baby's shaking out. That big bar down there is a problem. We got to take a look at the NDX 100. NDX 100 right now is trading up 26 bucks. Inside the future market, we're going to do the same type of exercise here. What you're going to see, we bring this back, and the, di the divergence is there inside. You know, you have a spike, but not like the S&Ps. The spike... At that low today was uh, 12,273. That, you know, that's enough to get hit though. That's the bottom line. That thing wants to get hit again because you can see when we came into that, we came in, yeah, the market was open. That was 140 from yesterday and that was 14,000 contracts and we came into 21,000. Yeah, and the bottom line, you're going up and you got uh, two, uh, one minute left and on this bar right here, you only have 10,000 contracts. So the bottom line is you just don't have the buyers out here inside of this market. We go Now let's go to King Dollar because what we have with King Dollar is that it looks to me that what you're going to get here is that, you know, the, the benchmark is the day of the 5th of July. That's when King Dollar went up 1,700 ticks. Now the high of that folks, is 106,763. You stay over that 106,763, and guess what? What ends up happening again is it can go run for that high. If it runs for the high, this market is, is going to take conniptions. Now, let's go take a look at the S&P. So if we take a look at this SPY, what you're going to see here, we had divergence yesterday, meaning that the NDX has the volume. The SPY didn't, okay? Uh, bottom line is that what you, what you have out here today is that the SPY hit 395.76. Well, the thing that's wild is that the gap, the top of one of the gaps, and we came down one, two, yeah, we gapped down three times. Um, that top of that gap is three, 395.77. The thing that's intriguing here is that I actually forgot that we had three gaps down. So a way the three gap play works, folks, is this. Most times what happens is that you get gap down and then the market loves to go back to fill the gap. Now the fill of the gap would be 401.44. And then guess what? Whatever way the gap has started, that is where the trend is and that's where you go right back to. So this is gonna be intriguing watching now this whole thing shakes out. And of course the thing to watch, let's go over to the SMHs. 
because the SMHs move the NDX 100, the NDX 100 moves the S&P. So when we take a look at the, the SMHs, bottom line, they had good volume yesterday. Now the SMHs, let's see, that gap is 232.27. And we hit 230.02 today. So it's going to be really intriguing watching this shake out. And what the signal would be was it would be this. Yesterday you had good volume in the SMHs, 5 million shares. You're 2.2 today. So we should have the volume in. And the real question is, is that is it going to hold price and is it going to get into that gap? Some of the higher volume equities in this market out here today, we should get some decent volume out here. You got Carnival, Carnival's getting smoked. They're doing a, a secondary or a third. It's like, who would buy a billion dollars? But you're going to see these broker dealers go out and basically sell, you know, equity in Carnival. And the thing that's intriguing here about this is that the, when you sell an equity, folks, okay, the bottom line uh, is that, you know, You're not getting interest rates. You're not getting anything, man. It's not like selling a bond issue, okay? Uh, we'll see how this baby shakes out, but they're in tough shape. Um, you have the Ma Bell's down a buck eighty. Uh, what that's all about is that uh, Ma Bell's having a hard time, uh, evidently co co collecting uh, telephone bills. And if that's the case, man, that that means that this uh, downdraft is hitting a lot quicker than that I realized. Because, you know, telephone bills aren't that expensive, right? I mean, you know, but the reality is, is maybe they're more expensive because everyone has cell phones now. I'm not, I'm not sure. But when you're talking about 30 or 40 bucks, if you have, have a hard time collecting 30 or 40 dollars, this economy at this point is softer than I realize. You get, uh, well, no agents cruise is down with um, Carnival. You get CSX is up uh, 135. If we go inside of the Dow Industrials, we take a look at the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness out here. You get point-wise, we have uh, Goldman's putting 812 positive points, Visa 8, Walmart 4, taken away from it. United Health 41, Travelers 30, IBM 23. Uh, let's just go look at IBM. They came out with their numbers. They just can't get out of their own way, man. Uh, you know, it's pretty amazing, too, as they did plenty of buying in IBM. IBM was holding up when the market wasn't holding up, okay? And then they come out with their numbers, and guess what, man? Nothing has changed, okay? IBM, bottom line, has been toasted for about 10 years. Uh, it's going to go back to the lower end of its consolidation, and what's game on IBM now is 100.07. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how this shakes out, man. I mean, it, it couldn't basically break its consolidation that was in, and that's pretty intense, um, when you when you think, in fact, let's let's just let me just go look at these because you see, IBM has been shrinking for so long; it's incredible. So IBM did 15.5 billion, and so picture this: a year ago, they did 18.7 billion, folks. Okay, and they brought it two dollars and thirty-one cents to the bottom line. You know, last year they brought two dollars and thirty-one cents, thirty-three cents. It's only going to be a matter of time. You can see these numbers. Every number IBM has is contracting. They're losing eight point. 5% in the U.S. This is on a three-year basis. In Europe, 11.8% and in Asia, 12.1%. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 187. You get the NASDAQ uh, up 20. S&Ps are off three. And uh, there's a lot of action out here, man. Uh, it's going to get really intriguing to see how this whole thing shakes out. Um, we uh, Let's go over to Tesla next. Actually, no. Here, yeah, this is what we're going to... Wait to hear this, man. DHI. We're going to go to the home builders, okay? So I was watching this yesterday, man. And this was so intriguing because... This is what happened, folks, in 2007. And I remember this so well because I was shot the home builders, right? And they did a counter trend bounce that was a mind blower before they blew up. And guess what? D.A. Horton came out with numbers last night. The numbers were shot, okay? But let me show you something. This is what's happening yesterday. See this volume on D.A. Horton? You are pushing in 6.1 million. You're pushing to the swing point. The swing point here is 4.4. Bottom line, they come up with the numbers, and let's go through these numbers, because the, the numbers, you know, basically they they got lower 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 deals, okay, uh, meaning lower numbers. That being said, there it is right here, okay. So, yeah, D.A. Chardon reported weaker than expected quarterly orders, reduced the expectations for home deliveries, and the full fiscal year of U.S. housing slowdown begins to hit builders. For the first three months, purchase contracts fell 7% from a year earlier. Um, and also expected 19,300, and they got 19, uh, 16,693. The company expected to deliver 83 to 85,000, down from 88 to, to 90. Okay. That being said, the bottom line is that you get ABC structures all over the place inside the home the home builders. Okay. So this one here, D. H. Horton has set up what 75 and a half. And you can, it's a basically a 10.A to B, which is going to get you 81. We're at 75. Okay, now watch this. We go over to Lanar. Lanar is going to be the same type of setup. Bottom line, Lanar is taking its B point out. The B point on the Lanar is going to be three point, it's uh, $80.29. 3 million shares. You're at 1.1. It's going to have the volume. My point is, is this. Let me bring this back because when you see this, what happened in 2007 is that you came down and then there was a pause and the home builds went back up and then they imploded. And I was, I, I was looking at this about three or four months ago, wondering like, okay, man, because that's, you know, of course I'm in that business. So I was watching them really closely and it's going to be really intriguing if the exact same thing happens, meaning that you get the bounce going, 
it's a great bounce, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, it's not what, you know, was expected, okay? Um, so it's pretty wild, uh, just in general, uh, the type of bounce that they're actually getting out there. Uh, inside the crypto business, uh, what you have uh, with Coinbase, uh, bottom line is that you just had uh, one of the managers, and I remember that this was done, I think they fired the manager a while ago. Let's see, the, uh, the FBI just arrested Coinbase Global product manager for allegedly leaking inside information to help his brother and a friend buy tokens just before they were listed on the crypto exchange. There was a, there was a huge amount of insider trading, and there still is. Um, in the crypto market, right? Uh, one of the uh, big VCs came out this morning and he was talking about the aspect of, um, of course, you know, what we have now is that you got an implosion inside the token business. And he was talking about the aspect that the venture capital folks in general, right, either were incompetent or committed a fraud or flat out were incompetent and committing a fraud, that what we're going to have, he, he was relating this to the 2000 implosion inside the NASDAQ, okay, he, sorry about that, folks, he was, he was relating that to the uh, 2000 implosion in the NASDAQ, that would end up happening is that there was litigation forever, and then he was explaining that the professionals were basically pushing all the tokens onto the retail in a huge way. And, you know, there's no doubt. And, of course, the, you know, the SEC doesn't stop and the Justice Department doesn't stop. Yeah, they don't get people sometimes four, five, ten years later. But the bottom line is that we're going to see a lot of it. Because the bottom line is that they are worth nothing. That's the bottom line. That, you know, and that's going to be 90% of the tokens that are out there. It's pretty amazing that, you know, you, you start a business, you say, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you tokens, and they're claiming that it's not a security. Well, I suspect that uh, we're going to see that change, and that change is going to be pretty dramatic. Let's go into the oil market and see what's going on with oil, because uh, oil was also moving uh, pretty, tr pretty dramatically out here. We got up to this price point. Yeah, this is down hard, man. And you can see this. We were talking about this yesterday. I was on the air in the afternoon. Um, bottom line is that you have, you're coming into the vicious downdraft. Uh, that's when the oil went from uh, 105 down to 94. Uh, we got up to uh, 100.99. And now bottom line is you get volume here, man. So this thing's going to try to get back to the lower end of consolidation. Um, and we'll see whether, you know, bottom line, uh, if it can get to lower price. If we go take a look at the uh, XAU, not the XAU, Exxon Mobil, take a look at a few of these equities out here. Uh, yeah, this is a consolidation. Exxon is down off its highs of 105. Bottom line, you're at 86, and it just didn't have the juice. You can see when we're taking a look at this, yesterday you went up to... 89 with 16 million shares. Well, you're going into 84 million, 64 million on the way down. So correlation, 64 million, and you go up with 16. There's not a lot of times, folks, okay, that you see the differential being that dramatic, meaning that the contraction of volume in that particular case, would, 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 I mean, oh my God, it's, it's a couple hundred percent, okay? You don't, you don't get to see that a lot. You know, most of the time, if you get a contraction of volume of 30%, it's a lot. It gets really tricky understanding, you know, which way the market wants to go when it's 5 6 7%. That's not a big deal. I like to see at least 10% either on the way up or on the way down. You know, that's where it shakes out. Now, let's go look at this gold market because this was so intriguing, man, this morning. I mean, the, the thing that was intriguing about the gold market this morning is this. The dollar... Okay, really, you know, bottom line did not take off topside. You know, in fact, it went down. And when the dollar went down, gold got smoked, man. I mean, we went to 1696, and then guess what? It just reversed and went topside. And we'll see if, in fact, it can get, you know, any traction. Gold hasn't been able to get any traction whatsoever. And we're talking about. Uh, when I say whatever, we're talking about going right back to 1834. 
You know, I mean, it's, it's heavier than that. We were basically six months ago, you were at 2,091, you're down. But you had sideways movement. This leg here, though, man, this leg here has been relentless on the way down. It just keeps going on the way down. So it's going to, you know, we'll see where this baby shakes out. If, if in fact, uh, you're going to get any buyers in here. Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading down 214. You get the NASDAQ up 7. S&P's are down 750. We'll see if it's going to go after that uh, high volume spike low, you know. If you're a bull, you want it to do what happened right now. So you can get it over with and has the rest of the day to basically get topside. Looks like it's going to be a sideways day in general. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, down 170. You get the NASDAQ uh, uh, up 35, and you get the S&Ps up 2. Let's go to John in Philly. John, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tim. Uh, thanks for taking the call. I love that commentary you had for us on the home builders and that whole market. That's uh, that's going to be an interesting thing to try to, to navigate here the next couple of months. It is, man. It d totally is. There's no doubt. You know, And one of the main reasons, folks, is this, is that because the rent structures, and Tommy was talking about this this morning, are so large that, you know, that housing market will hold up better than I suspect that most of us actually probably think. Because, uh, you know, th there's plenty of cities that the rent structure is twice as big as owning a house. Those are the typical San Francisco, Austin, you know, the cities that have been out there for quite some time. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, if the rent structure holds up, you know, then the housing market is still going to stay pretty tight. So we'll see where it shakes yeah, out. I, uh, I, I also uh, appreciate 
that Friday afternoon uh, 3 to 4 p.m. discussion you do with your colleague just on on the, the your local Florida markets down there. Yes. Uh, just as you go forward on that, I'd be very interested to hear the two of you comments just on an ongoing basis as to the ebbs and flows that you see of the institutional buyers that are uh, uh, coming or going, uh, you know, buying single-family houses down there. Yeah, and they've backed off. I, I actually sold them. I sold, oh my God, I sold them so many. It was sick. I sold over like, a, I don't know, 130, 140 lots. So it was, yeah. And <laughs> good, I did. Good for you. Say, Tom, uh, I, I, uh, in addition to that, I'd segue to ask you the question on the long bond futures contract, ZBU2. Uh, Tom, uh, we, we had a nice... Uh, rally today. Um, we reversed from, you know, 138. We've gone back up to 140 and a half. In the past, excuse me, in six of the past 10 days, that long bond contract has popped up and stalled, you know, 140 to 140 and a half. So, uh, you know, in your uh, parlance, uh, we are. Uh, either topping out here at 140 and a half or we're building cause to jump this little creek at that same level. Uh, and of course, time will give us the answer, but I thought I'd ask if you can take a look at that, please, and uh, share with us if you see anything that leads you to conclude it's likely a breakout higher or a top out and roll lower, uh, you know, in the next 10 days. So why should you have here? It's kind of interesting, okay? So you, you, you get the spike high at that 142.06. You've been going sideways, and see the day, like about a week ago, you were actually pushing with volume on that swing point. You had 450,000 contracts, which is a lot of contract volume, folks, on the 30. Now, we're already at 234, so this is already a lot of contracts again, John. So that's telling me that it's going to try to test it, man, you know? And... You know, if it if if the long bond gets over, the, you know, this 142, uh, the, this game to 148. So it's like, okay, what that what's that going to be all about? And what that means, folks, is that interest rates will be going down versus going up. <laughs> so, and well, yeah, you know, and, and, oh, yeah, and just just to elaborate on that thought, if in fact we plow over 140 and a half en route to test 142 and move higher from there, all that's telling you is uh, you've got big institutional investors, be it public or private sector, uh, who are looking through, you know, the next three to six months and saying, hey, things are looking weaker and weaker, looking a bit further out in time, and the long bond would thereby be discounting, you know, uh, 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 cessation of the Fed hiking rates, you know, sometime in the foreseeable future. Yeah, there's no doubt. And so... Why, let's get the calendar up, okay? So if we take a look at the Fed calendar right now, 27th of July is the next number, and then September 21st. So, yeah, no, I agree with you, John. Um, you know, that is like, okay, you know, uh, are they going to have to basically back down, you know, because of the fact that you can see, you know, when these numbers are coming out, that things are slowing down, you know? And the real question is going to be is that the, have they already crushed, you know, a certain part of inflation. I, I think what we're going to see is that they'll probably still go at the 50 in July, you know, and after that, we'll see where this shakes out, man. Do you know what I mean? But um, there's no doubt that right now, just as you said, there's, there's big players that are buying that long bond, and they expect that, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, when you're buying a long bond, folks, okay, uh, the, the bottom line is that you are basically expecting that, you know, the rates are going to go down, not go up. You know, it's just, it's the inverse all, all the time. So it's, yeah, I know. It's out here, man. Um, and, Thanks very much, Tom. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at that S&P. Just got a little pop on the S&P out here. You're up nine and a half bucks inside of the S&P. And we're going to, let's Pull that back. There we go. Okay. So you're, you're going after the highs now. So now, now the question is, let me see what you got here. You get five minutes into this bar, and we're at 30,000 contracts. Last bar up there had 60. So we're, we're going to do 60. You know, the bottom line, we'll see whether it can break topside, man. Uh, you need the break of this. Uh, we hit pre-market 
Yeah, 8 o'clock, 8.40, we hit the uh, 35.79, and we're basically right next to it, just six points away from it. So you'll, we'll see whether you can take it out. You still my yeah, it, it, you still have this big bar that's open downtown. So when you see something like this, let me see. Yeah, you, see, you, get, you get plenty of time to have the volume. That's the real bottom line. Now, what's really cool about this is this. Now, let me go to the NQs because, see, when you get volume, and in this particular case, it should be able to do it, right? And if it doesn't, that tells you a lot also, folks, okay? That's, you know, when, you, when you're looking at markets, okay? So, like the NQs, uh, bottom line, we are at uh, 535. That's already taken out the highs of yesterday. Uh, you have the spike high up here today, and, and, you know, so the bottom line is that we'll see whether that can get it done. The volume's not there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but we're still, you still got four minutes left. And four minutes left is a long time left inside um, of the futures market in general. We're going to take a look at Amazon. We have an Amazon. Amazon out here, bottom line, that they're buying uh, one, what are they buying? One, yeah, one medical for $3.9 billion. And you can see Amazon wants to basically, you know, be in that telemedicine business. There's no doubt about it. You know, uh, the, the, the parent is called One Life Health, uh, operates 182 medical offices in 25 markets. Uh, uh, U.S. customers pay a subscription fee for access to its physicians and round-the-clock digital health service. I can see that, man. You know, it's going to be wild if you get a health business that's on a subscription-based business, man. You know, Amazon love, anyone loves subscription-based businesses. That's the real bottom line. Inside of the health business, that turns into a whole particular different thing, particularly when we're talking about 24 hours a day. That's what Amazon is talking about, 24 hours a day. We gotta take a look at Microsoft. So, Microsoft, you know, we get back next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Microsoft's gonna be coming out with numbers. Microsoft today is trading 261.30. Um, having a hard time getting traction. Yesterday and the, the day prior, you know, we had a great day in the marketplace, but Microsoft basically is going into the downdraft that was created about a week and a half ago. We just can't get the volume going. 35 million was on the way down, and we went up with 22 million yesterday. That's not a equity that wants to go to higher price. That's how it's set up. So Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading down 92. NASDAQ is up 54. S&Ps are up 10. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. FNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, back, folks, to Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, up 104. The NASDAQ is uh, up 43. S&Ps are up 7. Check this out, man. This is pretty amazing. I'm, I'm quite familiar with this whole area, too, of course, because I'm from Boston. So, and Madeira, folks, is, from, is in Cambridge, okay? They have they're, they're a warehouse in Norwood, but they're in Cambridge. So check this out. In late 2021, uh, uh, Kathy Angelina, sales director of, at the St. Regis Residence in Boston, that's an under construction luxury condominium, was elated to have back to back showings after a long sales drought. Things started well when a Pfizer employee, check this out, man, this is amazing. When a Pfizer employee agreed on the spot to purchase the 16th floor condo with views of Boston Harbor for $4.85 million. Two hours later, a Moderna executive honed in on the same unit. When she remarked on the consequence, she had said, he, he just looked at me completely serious and said, I want the same home, but I need to be one floor higher than Pfizer. He reserved the 17th floor for $4.95 million that same day. Um, you know, the bottom line is that it's showing uh, the amount of acceleration. So listen to the amount of acceleration here. here I'll just bring up Moderna. It's, it's easy, like, but you're going to see this is actually. This is that when I read these numbers, man, these numbers are like just over the top. So and what, it, what the article goes on to say, folks, OK, that what happened is that Moderna has basically hired 200% more employees than they had, and these are big jobs. So look at the numbers here. Just look at the numbers. So in 2020, Moderna took in 300, no, let's start in 2019. 2019, they took in 60 million. 2020, 800 million. Well, 2021, 18.5 billion. And this year, 22 billion. Now, the bottom line is that you're going to see a huge drop off back down to 10 billion. But you can see the type of uh, companies and what happens when companies actually move, you know, into areas and they're successful. Um, that um, it accelerates the higher end dramatically. It, it accelerates the rents. It accelerates the buying. And uh, you know, when the whole biotech business started, my first office was in Mifflin Place in Cambridge, and. Uh, the second one was in Mifflin Place and Kendall Square. They had built this new building in Kendall Square. And this is when Amgen had just started. And, you know, it, it gets crazy because when I was at Mifflin Place, so check this out. This is, uh, if you remember Lotus 1, 2, 3, that guy, Mitch, I didn't know him personally, but I knew him because we were always having coffee at the say The Starbucks was up the street. There were only three employees at Lotus 1, 2, 3. They were two doors down from us, right? And... Then, of course, Microsoft, I think Microsoft took them or blew them out of the water. I, I, I forget what happened. But the bottom line is that when Amgen, Amgen, oh, no, Biogen. It's Biogen, I think. Yeah, Biogen basically set up headquarters right outside Kendall Square, and that just put Kendall Square on fire. And from that point on, you know, now I'm going back, uh, it's 1980. That's a long time, 43 years. But you can see over the course of those years that Kendall Square 
in general, has turned into a powerhouse in the bio business. I mean, it just in a monster way. There's no two ways about it. Let's go take a look at uh, we got a couple of tigers that want to GL that want to look at wheat. So let's see what we got here. So wheat has been getting smoked, and where are you, wheat? Come on, baby, where are you? Okay, here we go. So wheat now is trading eight twenty three a bushel. This has been a, it was a, so six months ago, picture, six months ago, wheat was seven seventy five a bushel. A nonstop run up to twelve eighty five a bushel. Now a nonstop run back down to where it started from. And now the real question is, let me put the volume on this. Okay, so. Well, the way I look at wheat right now is that the you take the last leg down, even if it's a point three eight two retracement, it's a dead cat bounce. You probably get eight ninety five out of it, and right now you're at eight twenty three. And the way wheat trades is that let's see, every quarter tick, so points fifty dollars. That's how that's shaking out, man. Mitch Caper, that's right. That's thanks, Duffy. That was the guy. That was the guy. You know, it's it's pretty amazing. You know how small Boston is, and yet the amount of um, businesses and high tech businesses that are there. there. There's no doubt about it. it. It's it's no doubt a huge number. Let's take a look at A F. Oh no! One second. Hold on. What is it? Whoa, there we go. Let's go into the uh, XAU and the HUI. So both of these also have been on a one-way move, and the one-way move has been down. Uh, we take a look at the XAU first. And, okay, so you hit the low. Yesterday we come down with 31 million. Well, that's good. Okay, so check this out, man. The first low that was, a, well, the last low, that was established was $100.56. We had volume there of 44 million. You can see yesterday when you come down, you come down with 31. So that's a good situation, man. Well, it's not a great situation, but it's the test with lighter volume. Now the real question is going to be is that do you get any traction, traction onto the upside? You know, and we'll see uh, if in fact we can. We go to the uh, HUI. I suspect the, the Gold Bugs Index is going to be the same type of setup. Just laying at lows, which is always dangerous, man. That's the bottom line. Um, so we had 30 million shares. That's good. Versus 19. So this has been happening for a while, meaning that you've been drifting lower. You know, it's having a hard time holding price. Yeah, the, the volume hasn't been big. So you have a contraction of volume, but bottom line is that... You need buyers, and we've been I've, been, I've seen this before in the market, and you know, this market, uh, it takes a huge amount of patience, man. I mean, in a monster way. And what it really takes is understanding in your own head, because it's your money that's on the line, is that, is inflation staying? Is the interest rate structure gonna go higher and basically crush inflation, or is inflation going to be running at five, six, seven percent? You know, when Tommy was bringing up the aspect this morning about the Social Security checks, um, if Social Security checks go up ten percent, man, people are going to start worrying again about you know the the good old U.S. government paying all these bills. Now, my take is they're going to pay it because they're going to push it out. But you can imagine, like in one year, if Social Security is up by ten percent, even nine point nine to eleven percent, I mean, you are talking monster, monster numbers. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have the Dow. Dow down 130. Nasdaq's up 37. S&P's up 4. We'll come right back.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so Miami, we've seen all the financial firms moving out of New York, moving out of Chicago, coming down to Miami. And um, bottom line, folks, what you're going to see next, which is pretty amaz amazing, uh, Anderson Horowitz, okay, which is, you know, the, that's uh, Mark Andreessen. Um, bottom line, that started, uh, was it Netflix? Net something. Bottom line is that Microsoft took him out, but, you know, he's done great since then. Um, they just planted a flag and was announced that this morning also in Miami. Now, that's the first big venture firm that I've seen come out of Silicon Valley doing it. It's going to be really intriguing if you start seeing the Silicon Valley folks planting flags. What you had yesterday, you had a huge law firm yesterday plant the flag also. Um, they took three floors in Bricknell, uh, the, the tower in Bricknell. Um, there's, a, there's a big dynamic change that's happening, man. And if, in fact, that dynamic change happens right to the uh, Silicon Valley also, um, it's, 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 it's a game changer. I mean, Miami's always been vibrant. Uh, what Miami has always had is that it had, it's always had the South America money coming up, bottom line, huge amounts of, uh, when you go to Miami, so check this out, when you go to Miami, man, still to this day, and I'm not talking about drug money either. Um, I don't think I am anyway. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not. Um, you wouldn't believe the amount of cash that they do deals with, okay? I was over there. Me and Bestford. Me and Bestford were over there. In fact, we'll talk about this uh, tomorrow. We were over there right before the pandemic. When it first started, and I was looking to buy a boat, right? And 
everyone, right, was like, okay, you're gonna give me cash? And I'm looking at them saying, this is a trip. Yeah, I'm gonna give you 300,000 in cash, right? <laughs> it's like, and it was just normal for them. It was like, it was just so wild, man. Um, so I suspect Miami's gonna continue to, you know, basically not only get higher, uh, you st Miami is um, already vibrant. That is gonna bring things uh, up in a dramatic way. There's no doubt about it. Stay right there, folks. We got uh, Think or Swim coming up next. They're going to be growling and prowling with you. Dow Industrials right now uh, down 103. NASDAQ is up 49. S&P is up 7.5. We'll see you in a few hours, so, folks.